Why is Mild Red Songbird? Evan Eve Evangeline Einstein's mind. Mainstream and closed news to you. Eve Evangeline Einstein's mind solves Jacob Scher Scherson's quantum physicist problem. Okay, I took notes. He was, um, the video is how to become a quantum physicist in five minutes. Jacob Sherson at the TED Talks. Okay, so I took notes on his talk. Phys physics is the natural science that okay, this is a definite, I looked up these definitions, okay, so I know what we're talking about. Physics is a natural science that studies matter, its motion, and behavior through space and time, and that studies the related entities of energy and force. Physics is one of the most fundamental scientific disciplines, and its main goal is to understand how the universe behaves. Dr. Albert Einstein, celebrity genius theoretical physicist. Theoretical physics is a branch of physics that employs mathematical models and abstractions of physical objects and systems to, relate, to rationalize, explain, and predict natural phenomena. This is an experimental this is in contrast to experimental physics, which uses experimental tools to probe these phenomena. And I told you the video in case you want to watch it. It's very good. He's very likable, very clear. It's, it's a good video. I heartily recommend it. Quantum is the smallest unit of something that you would like to count game. He created a game. He and his researchers created a game called Quantum Moves. Quantum superposition is the ability of atoms to be in two different places at the same time. This has to do with the, how the game works that you play. Quantum tunneling, also you use this when you play the game, is the ability of atoms to tunnel through barriers. Example, me running toward a wall. This is what he said, Jacob said. Instead of me crashing through it, I appear on the other side unharmed. You can do that in the game. Two of the founding fathers of quantum physics, Einstein and Scrager have both said that they regret ever playing a part in this crazy theory. Sometimes, in solving a complex problem, you don't have to fully understand it, but simply intuitively accept it. You have intuitive intuition with running with water, then you accept it. In this particular game, water can flow uphill. You form a quantum intuition, and you become a quantum physicist without even noticing it. People around the world play the game and become quantum physicists. When we looked at the data, we found something amazing. Not only did many of the players find better solutions than our powerful computers could do. Looking at the millions of data points revealed also deep insights into the nature of the physics problem that me and a group of highly skilled physicists couldn't discover on our own. Okay, so he's saying regular people discovered um, problems they hadn't discovered. That's why I dare to call you quantum physicists, he's telling his audience. Whereas I solve problems rationally 
and using equations, you use your intuition. Note from me. Jesus Christ, first century, Charon Singh said in 1979, intuition is the voice of God. Okay, so that's huge. You, so he's, he's saying that the players, the regular people who play the game um, are using their intuition, are using the voice of God. Using the game, I can create a global army of quantum physicists. This is Jacob talking. You may ask, why should I bother? Normally, a compute normally computers are based on operation and string of bits, zero or one. We are creating a quantum computer. It can perform an infinite number of operations at the same time being using individual atoms and string bits that can be zero or one the same time I said that okay insert from page four okay does that mean what does that mean Where's page four? Let's go to four. And so for page three. Nearly 2% of the world's energy consumption is spent producing fertilizer that requires high temperature and high pressure. And yet bacteria can do this at room temperature. How do they do this? We have no idea. But with the computational power of quantum computers, we think we can learn those tricks. It's not a trick, it's a process. And we can produce enough fertilizer to feed the growing world population. Labs have tried to create quantum computers. So far, this was just a game of assimilation of an atom. In the past months, we have taken the demonstration of science one step further by building tools of allowing normal people on the Internet to get access to the real atoms in my lab in Denmark, sidestepping the normal years required. We try to make it as easy as playing a game to try and create entirely new quantum experiments in a mat in a mat matter of seconds. That's amazing, huh? Now let's Okay, I read that. The problem is so they try to create supercomputers, the problem is Quantum bits lose their information very quickly due to random influences from the environment. What you could do is speed up all of these processes, and that's exactly what the game players have done for us. They've found ways of picking up an atom and moving it around on our potential quantum computers much faster than we thought theoretically possible. They helped us take a very important step in the development. These results are just the latest in a citizen science revolution that is spreading across many fields of science. In the Galaxy Soup Project, you can help researchers map out galaxies. You can help researchers search for cures for diseases like HIV, AIDS, and tuberculosis. Tuberculosis. Note, end butt fucking. Isn't shit bacteria? They suck shit tipped dicks after it's been in butts with shit particles resting inside the anus on it. Okay. Now, let's continue. The fact that you, with no formal training 
and very casual effort can contribute to solving these very complex problems is the first of my two main points. The second one is about you and me as players and as human beings and how we are different from computer animals. If you have followed the tech news in recent years, then you may have heard that the artificial intelligence algorithms have beaten expert players of games of Jeopardy, Chess, and Go. How come even we can use games to solve problems that not even the most powerful supercomputers can do? One reason that my researchers and I are fascinated with the human mind as our generic ability to solve problems despite often seeming having not having enough excuse me, not having enough information at our disposal. We humans know that we don't have infinite storage capacity, so we filter out, make leaps of faith or intuition. As an individual on an individual level. Okay, so on the other hand, if you play our games and you're very steady handed, you'll probably be led to try very similar solutions and bit by bit improving them. If you play our game on a shaky subway train, then you have to abandon that strategy and try out much more different solutions. It's actually been established that for tasks of creativity and innovation, you actually have to have a period of crazy exploration. I can relate to that because <laughs> I've been um, exploring the um, def the meanings in words, and sometimes I, you know, have to. Uh, decode words that make no sense for a time and then finally I'll see the real answer to, to what the word meant. Sometimes being less skilled at something makes you more able to solve it. I talked about memory and steadiness of hand. Of course there are many different human skills wouldn't it be fantastic to be able to map out all of them and create what you call an equation of innovation? For any innovation challenge, it would tell you exactly what skill set is needed to solve it. Of course, this is an extremely daunting task, but we believe with hundreds of thousands of people solving these complex challenges, we will have enough data to unlock some of the subtle patterns underlying human innovation. Does human innovation depend on gender and age or culture? Again, we don't know. But finding out may actually be the key to finding out entirely new forms of artificial intelligence that are much more like true human intelligence. Uh, you know, I don't care for this. I don't care for artificial intelligence. I, I prefer human intelligence. Why are we trying to duplicate it? We already have it, you know. They're playing God. Is that is that what it is? I want to understand the mind of God. Divine, intelligent design. So I can feel what God feels, said Albert Einstein. What is Jacob's motive? I started out, said Jacob, this journey by closing my eyes and picking up a four-leaf clover. I used to lay, and then this is my story. I have a quick story for you. I used to lay on the grass in my backyard in Tennessee, searching with my hands through the plentiful three-leaf clovers, for a four, looking for a four-leaf clover. When I found one of the rare tiny plants, I would make a wish and place it in the Bible and leave it there, okay, believing I would get my wish. I know now that it was not by chance. This is Jacob talking. That's the end of my story. 
I know now that it was not by chance my mind knew that the four-leaf clover was there without me rationally being aware of it. In many ways in my current research, I seem to be reliving this fantastic discovery. I started out this project gamifying quantum research challenges, a crazy project with no rational hope of being able to find anything useful. But I closed my eyes and trusted my instincts, and I hope in the future you will do the same. That's what Jacob said. Now I decoded same. S-H-E-C-M-A-M-E-V-E-E. Okay. She, M, Eve, and then she turned the M and A around to Ma, M, A. She, Ma, Eve, Mother of the Earth, Eve. Jacob, now I'm going to solve his problem for him. Jacob has never solved the mystery of how he knew the four-leaf clover was there. He probably had been an animal who ate the clover in a past life. A white-tailed deer eats clover. Jacob's tale of finding the clover he talk, he told to the white people at TEDx talk was endearing, as in deer, okay? There is no such thing as a coincidence. Okay, so there you go. In a past life, Jacob ate deer. And, I mean, Jacob was a deer and ate clover. So he simply smelled the four-leaf clover. That's how he knew it was there. Because he retained that ability from when he was, had been a deer in a previous life. Jacob said he's repeating the experience of the clover in his work. The fact that the mystery of how his mind knew what he the energy in his physical body, his brain, didn't know, fortunately led him to have a fine job. Finding a four-leaf clover is considered lucky, mild red songbird. Though you're, through your eyes, I see a world full of magic possibility. This, these lines... This is what he's talking about, is magic, right? The possibility of magic. And that's from the song Forever Now by Michael Bublé, who was Adam, the first Earth entity. And he was Eve's very first date. Eve Evangeline Einstein's mind. He was G Michael Bublé's Jesus Christ projection also. So, um... It wasn't magic. I told you how, how it happened, okay? It was reincarnation, which is not magic. It's a fact of life that the Christians and the people in, this, in the West don't know about because the Emperor Constantine in the 4th century removed the concept, removed reincarnation as a fact from the Bible, along with 44 other books he removed from the Bible. So that's why people are ignorant about reincarnation. But if they knew that, they'd have answers to a lot of their mysteries. And um, you, can, you can watch the video uh, banned several times. That's how you Google it, banned several times the science behind the law of attraction proof okay and uh, that's that's um so he'll explain to you about in, the emperor constantine removing a lot of information from the bible okay so there you go this uh, this uh eve evangeline einstein's mind this is einstein this is the body his mind is in. The Michelle Bird song, Mild Red Song Bird, Mild Red Bird Song, Eve Evangeline. Okay, so there you go. I solved this problem. He's been he's been wondering his whole life how that happened. Now, if he has an open mind and can listen to logic, 
he'll see that that's, that's what happened. It was leaking from a previous life. Okay, so long. Uh,